Kevin Clay, and I'm one of the Lean Six Sigma instructors here at Six Sigma Development Solutions. Uh, today, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the Lean Six Sigma CNE matrix, cause and effect matrix. Uh, the CNE matrix is the third of uh, four tools in the Lean Six Sigma qualitative root cause analysis. Uh, some people uh, might think that this CNE matrix is uh, aligned with uh, what's called the cause and effect diagram, which is the Fishbone or the Ishikawa diagram. Uh, two different things. This uses uh, qualitative scoring to, to really come up with uh, understanding what the key inputs are. So just uh, to preface, uh, preface that. So you'll see here on, on the uh, screen in front of you, this is a uh, CNE, matri uh, CNE matrix. This uh, CNE matrix is a tool used to correlate and prioritize inputs uh, as to their effect on, on the, the process outputs. Uh, and we'll talk about where those process outputs go and where, uh, where they come from. So th there's uh, a number of steps here, and, and, and we're going to go through them one by one. Uh, again, this is kind of a high-level uh, introduction to the uh, CNE matrix. Uh, if you want a more in-depth understanding of the CNE matrix and, and the elements of it, uh, we actually have a, um, a tutorial, uh, not a tu tutorial, but uh, a lesson that uh, comes along with it, uh, a certification. So I'll get in, into that uh, here in a few minutes. So we, we've got some different elements of the uh, CNE matrix. The first element and the first step is we want to list our outputs, okay, our outputs. And these outputs actually come from another tool, all right? So if you're, if you're using these tools in conjunction, uh, the four tools in the uh, qualitative root cause analysis for Lean Six Sigma. The first tool is the SIPOC. The second tool is the input map. And the third tool is the CNE matrix. All right, so we use these tools uh, together uh, in sequence from the SIPOC to the input map to CNE matrix. And the next tool is the FMEA. Uh, now, these outputs are, uh, they come from an earlier tool that we use, the SIPOC. So I'm going to take you all the way back to the SIPOC. Give me just a second. So in my SIPOC, my process outputs are taste construction, del uh, delivery time, and quantity. So if we go back to our CNE matrix, There you see those same outputs. <clears throat> now, those outputs are important to us because they're going to help us to prioritize the inputs. Uh, and we'll talk about the inputs. The inputs are going to come from the input map. Now, after we have our outputs, we then need to um, weight the importance of our outputs. All right, these are really the, the, the weighting of customer importance. Uh, and they're on a scale from one to 10. So you see up here, we, we've got uh, four different numbers. Uh, and each of these are customer weighting, 10 being the highest, the most important, uh, uh, one being the least important, All right? Now I'm gonna give you a trick here. Because uh, when, when you engage your customer and you say, well, customer, what, what's the most important to you? Uh, the customer will, in most cases, in my experience, will, will tell you, well, they're all important to me. They're all tens. If they do that, this tool becomes less useful. All right. So I do, I do have, a, have a trick to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, when I'm engaging the customer... I on, on a flip chart, uh, a whiteboard, uh, or on a computer screen will write 
the numbers one, two, three, four, all the way through 10. So each individual number up to 10. Okay, and I asked them, so uh, how important is taste to you? Uh, and they, they look at me and they say, well, taste is, it's a 10. It's very important to us. All right. So I, I, I go up to that number 10 on the board, on the whiteboard, on the flip chart, uh, uh, in the digital WebEx that we're having. And, and I mark that off. And they, they kind of jump back and they say, whoa, wait, what's going on? Uh, well, that number's gone. But we can't wait with that number. We can't use that number in the waiting. Uh, and that, that kind of forces them to step back and say, okay, I really need to understand what the true importance of these are. Um, that this is not a, a practice used in the canned CME matrix. Not a lot of practitioners out there use that. Um, but it seems it, it, it works very well for us in keeping that customer on task with what is the most important down to what is the least important. Okay, so once we have determined the outputs and once we have determined the weighting of the outputs and, and that, that weighting of the outputs, that can't be something that you determine that you think is the weighting, meaning your customer is not involved in that. That, that has to be the external customer or the internal customer, the next step down in the process. They have to tell you that. Otherwise, you, you are making a judgment. And a lot of times that judgment ends up being wrong. All right, so once we have the output, we have the weighting of the output. Uh, then our next step is to put in, uh, is to list our inputs, okay, our inputs. And along with our inputs, we are going to also list our process steps. So you'll see here that for the process step setup, we have four inputs, all right? So in that case, we repeat the step, uh, step setup four times and put the four individual inputs. Now you ask, where, where did those inputs come from? Do we have to determine what those inputs? Uh, you do, but that was in a previous step. That was in the uh, input map tool. The input map, which is another blog that we have, uh, as well as another a brief introduction uh, uh, video. So we go into that step setup and we, we've got sandwich maker setup area, standard work instructions, consumer requirements. Okay. Uh, all of these move into I'll move into our process steps. Actually, there is one left down here. I'm not sure why that got put down as uh, number 11, but that's a part of it. Okay, so we've got five, we've got five steps. So we repeat set up uh, five times. Again, I'm not really sure why that ended up as number 11. That, that may be a glitch in our program, but that should be a, a, a uh, actually paired with these four other steps. Uh, later on, when we show you when we weight these uh, from highest to lowest, th those it doesn't matter where they are, just as long th as they show up on, on the uh, scene matrix. Okay, so we've got apply peanut butter. That's the second step. So if we go back over here, the second step is apply peanut butter. It has one, two, three, four, five, six steps. So we go back to the CNE matrix. We'll see one, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll repeat that uh, six times and we'll put in each of the individual steps. All right, so uh, you're gonna repeat your process step because each of the process step has multiple inputs and we want all the inputs included. Uh, one thing that I see a lot of my green belts do is put blank uh, rows in between each of these process steps. All right, that's not going to do us any good because that doesn't give us any data. All right, so these steps need to be, you know, one after another. They need the inputs one after another because we are going to, to resort these based on 
which one has the highest score and that score comes in our weighted total. All right, so once we have our inputs, then, then we list our correlation scores. Our co correlation scores uh, can be a zero, one, three, or a nine. Okay, now I'm not gonna go into in deeply what those scores are, but those are different scores and, and uh, the higher the score, the more the cause and effect. All right, so what, what I'm saying here is, how does sandwich maker, what correlation does it have to taste? What relationship does it have to taste? And based on the score, it's got a, a moderate effect on taste. All right, so we go through all of these and we put in the scores, all right? So once we have the scores put in, um, we then cross multiply, which means we take, uh, in order to get the score 57 for sandwich maker here, we take three times nine plus three times six plus one times four plus one times eight uh, and uh, sum that and that will give us 57. Okay, now I'm, I'm gonna kind of back up to the customer ratings. This is why it's very important that our customer ratings ha are different, all right? Because if they were all tens, then it, 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 it wouldn't give us any granularity to what the scores are down here, all right? So these would be less variable. Okay, now, once we determine all of our scores, then we can sort, we can sort on largest to smallest. All right, and when we sort on largest to smallest, <clears throat> our, the, the uh, rule of thumb is to take that, that, either top three or top five. And those now are our uh, KPIVs, which, are, which means key process input variables. Those are the significant variables. Now, remember that this comes from, this comes from qualitative scoring. So this comes from the people that you have in the room which means that you have to have a good team. You have to have a good team of people. If you have a team of people that aren't really the subject matter experts, then this is gonna all go out the door, all right? So this is qualitative scoring. And it, if you have five teams do this on the same problem in five different rooms without talking to each other, um, you're gonna get different results, which is why in Lean Six Sigma, that we really focus on, on hard data, metric data, uh, to really give us the answer, not, not qualitative data. But we do see the power uh, in the qualitative data because that helps us to kind of peel back the onion so far. But it takes data really to get us down to where we need to be. All right, so this is going to help us in, in our next tool and our next tool uh, is the FMEA, which is the failure modes and effects analysis. All right, uh, again, my name is Kevin Clay, uh, and I am one of the Lean Six Sigma instructors here at Six Sigma Development Solutions. Uh, I hope you have a little bit more knowledge uh, on the, a little bit better understanding on the CE matrix. Uh, we have a more in-depth lesson in, uh, on our website. Uh, if you are uh, accessing this video from YouTube, we will put the information to that uh, tutorial, that more in-depth tutorial, which comes with uh, an actual certification uh, on in the uh, descriptions below. Uh, if you're watching this video from our blog at, uh, at sixsigmadsi.com, uh, we'll put the information in the blog, actually, it's in the blog. Um, so if you have any more questions, please do not uh, hesitate to, to contact me. My email address is kclay at sigsigmadsi.com. 
uh, and my information, uh, uh, our information uh, for contact is on our website, uh, www.sixsigmadsi.com. Uh, and I hope that each of you have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you.